This conference will now be recorded. Ah, there we go. So now we started the recording. Um, and just to let you know, today from my end, I'm joined by Samras, our lead software developer for DMT Online, myself, and um, kindly Dan Crane, uh, the research data manager from King's College London, uh, will briefly discuss today for us how they go about using DMP online at King's College London. We'll, as always, have some space uh, for your questions or points. Um, if there is anything um, you want to discuss or highlight, or if you have even a comment on what Dan is going to say, feel free to do so. Um, you can always either unmute yourself and just feel free to speak to us, or if you're somewhere where you can't chat, just feel free to chat. There is a chat option in the GoToMeeting as well. I hope you can see that. And um, yes, yeah, so if that's okay, um, thank you very much for this morning for joining us. I'll just give you the space to talk now if that's all right. Dan, are you ready to talk? I am, yeah. Good, um, great, brilliant. Floor is yours. What's that, sorry? I was just saying the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Now, can I share my screen? I've got some slides. There's not much on them, but... Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, let me try to... Sorry, this is just the interface I'm not really used to. I'm trying to change... I can, I can the... click a button to say ask, so I'm going to do that. Uh, make a present. Oh, there we go. So I just made you a presenter, so hopefully uh -huh. it's going to work for you. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Let me get that away. Great. Does that work? Fantastic. Thank you very much, yep. Dan. Fantastic. All right. Let me get back to so the start of the beginning. Okay. Thanks very much for, uh, for having me along. So yeah, as uh, Magdalena said, I'm from King's College London. I'm the research data manager there, part of the libraries and collections research support team. Uh, so yeah, just a little bit about King's. So we are a fairly large research intensive university, uh, nearly 200 years old. We've got five campuses uh, across central London and there are our numbers of, of students and staff. And uh, as you can see from, I guess, the postgrad researchers and the academic and research staff, we've got about 6,000. So quite a lot. I guess all potential uh, data management plan writers. And we have lots of faculties, schools and institutes, um, and they cover pretty much all the disciplines. So we've got humanities, business, medicine, STEM, uh, social science and so on. So, so we cover pretty much everything. So we've got a broad range of, of interests. Uh, I'm sorry, your, uh, your sound is disappearing, coming and going. All right, okay. I'm, I'm going to lean in a little and um, hopefully that's a bit better. Um, do, do tell me if it, if it goes. Yes. So um, re the research support team um, based in the library, which I'm part, so we support um, research data management um, and scholarly publications and copyright as well. So we, uh, we're uh, the main source of information on copyright. And our research data management support is um, sort of advice throughout the life cycle. So all aspects of, of data management throughout there. We also manage the university's research data repository. We have a website with lots of information and guidance. We do training. So each month we do a broad research data management course. Um, but we also on request do um, uh, special sessions on data management planning uh, or other particular sort of targeted courses for um, particular groups. Um, but we also give lots of guidance on data management plans, so how to write them, um, and we also offer to review them when people have written them, either for a uh, funding application or if they've just written one because they're, they're being good and they want to plan what, what they're doing with their data throughout their work. So we, uh, we, we offer all that support for, for research data management. And the team itself, we are about 10 full-time uh, equivalent. Um, and about two of those are on research data management. So the rest are, are focusing on scholarly publications. So we, um, we do a lot, um, but we're not a big RDM team at the moment. But um, we're, we're aiming to share that knowledge throughout the team in, in sort of due course. So we have a research data management policy, and that says that all King's researchers, whether externally funded or not, should um, 
create and maintain a data management plan for all projects handling research data. And that, I guess that should is key in that it's not mandated, but we it's very much advised that people should do this. And we know that if people are doing their funding bids, then they're going to be doing one for that anyway. Um, but yeah, we, we encourage people to do one anyway. So DMP online at King's. So this is uh, before my time, but checking back through the records, we've used it since 2014. Uh, and this year we subscribed um, to the new model uh, and we customised our site with your help. Thank you very much. Uh, and you can sort of see it on the right there. Um, so we've got the King's red there, which uh, I'm not sure is um, too easy on the eye, but we haven't had any complaints yet. But um, <laughs> if anyone objects, it's given them a, a headache, then we might have to change it. <laughs> yes, the, the customization was great, so thank you very much for that. And we publicise this via um, newsletters that go out, via a training, we always mention it. Uh, any meetings we go to, we, we make people aware of DMP online. And in it, we have the, the regular funder templates. I think most of us have plus two King's templates. So we have a, a generic one and one more targeted for PhD students. And our usage, so going back since time began, we've had uh, nearly 900 users and over a thousand DMPs written. And in the last year, we've got 130 or so new users and 140 DMPs written. So not, not really knowing how that compares with the people, I'd imagine that's quite low probably for the number of people that we have. So we're, we're always um, keen to encourage more use um, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, and we sort of say we offer to review these um we see you know quite a, a small percentage of them um so what we want to do there is again encourage more people to send dmps to us so that we can review them um, and get an idea of, of what people are doing but i mentioned we're, we're quite a small team so if we suddenly got many more we, we'd uh, have to think about how we dealt with that how we scale it up but um but that'd be a nice problem to have and we also see a lot of a lot of king's templates being used um in comparison to the funder templates which I guess indicates that maybe we've got um, a lot of PhD students using them who aren't funded. So, um, so that's sort of uh, encouraging that we're getting people at the, the start of their uh, their research careers using the using the uh, the tool and writing a data management plan. So, uh, sort of future plans. So, more promotion, more promotion of the site and of DMPs generally, getting people to to write them as uh, as good practice. We know we need to review and update our guidance that we include in DMP online. So. Um, it was written um, a few years ago and uh, written well, but but we know we need to make it a bit more up to date with sort of what's happened at King's and, and make sure people are getting the, uh, the up to date guidance there. We're also looking to get more feedback on the site um, and on um, the DMPs that they've written. So so something that we notice is that we rarely see any feedback. It's been um, sort of reviewed by us and then presumably submitted for a funding bid, we don't really see what any feedback is on that funding bid or, you know, the DMP specifically. So our, our idea is to reach out to research managers and faculties to say, you know, if you do get any, please let us know so that we can actually know if the, the advice we're giving is good, if it's useful, or if there's anything we're doing to be more helpful. And then in the longer term, looking at more coordination of our sort of review of data management plans with teams along information compliance, ethics and governance around the university, and I've sort of put there, we look admiringly at, at Manchester as an example. <laughs> they've got a great setup there and they've really integrated it into their processes. So that's something we would uh, like to do as well. So we've got lots of things we know we, we could do much more and we, we are going to do much more. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to getting on with it really. Uh, and that is, I think, the end. Um, yeah, if you have any, any questions, please uh, feel free to send them my way now or, or get in touch later in my details. Uh, Thank you very much, Dan. Um, I think Joachim started to talk, so sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, I, I was just thinking you had over a thousand DMPs uh, so far. How many of those are made uh, public or have been published? Uh, uh, very few, yeah, I don't have, the, uh, don't have the numbers to hand, but, but yeah, very few of those. I think they all tend to be kept private. Yeah. So, so are they used to, I mean, reused for, uh, or uh, obviously if they're kept private, they, they can't be reused in, in that sense. Mm. But those that are, are, have you any indications that people look to those that have been published as a 
kind of template uh, or how to fill fill them out? Yeah, and we certainly, we ser I think people are certainly very keen to see examples of ones that have already been written, whether they're King's yeah. ones or not. Um, so we, yeah, we, we point out examples where they are made public and direct people to them. But often that's to the, to like the DCC examples that they have on their site, if you're aware of those. But mm. uh, I think yeah. you're right, the more, the more examples that we can surface and people are willing to share, that would be really useful because, you know, yeah. often people are it for the first time. Yeah, I was thinking particularly about PhD students that might mm. not yeah, be. Right. Yeah, nice. Something else that we can um, I didn't mention that, that we we'd look to do is is ask where we're asking for people to share any feedback they get, but also asking if you probably if they're successful in their their application, would they mind sharing the DMP with others? Mm. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, thank you very much, Joachim. I'm not sure whether anyone else has some question for Dan. If so, but please feel free to unmute yourself and um, speak. Um, and if if not, um, I think um, Dan, if you could make me a presenter again, so I'll just mm -hmm. go into sharing my own screen, if that's all right. Yeah, uh, make presenter again. Okay. Uh, okay, fantastic. Thank you. And also then, um, I'm not sure whether this will be all right for you um, to share the PowerPoint slides with me um, so I can just yes. share with the group if that's okay. Yes. Um, to also share your contact details in case someone else would like to get in touch with you afterwards. Um, Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, that was very interesting and I like the mandate you're trying to support everyone to write a data management plan. Do you normally start with the PhD student or would you already encourage master's students? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. We don't have a lot of contact with master's students, but we, we certainly would recommend it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think sometimes the earlier they start the practice, the good practice, then it might be easier just to make them um, to continue with a good practice, but that's just my own personal idea. Madeline, yeah, were you no, trying to say good. something? Well, sorry? I, no, I thought no. you were trying to talk, sorry. No, no, thank you, no. It's, uh, <laughs> Clear to me. <laughs> okay, good. So thank you again, um, Dan. And again, if you have any questions in the meantime, either feel free to chat um, to us or just feel free to write down anything you want to. Um, I just have a few updates uh, for you. So we have been very kindly offered um, a venue in Netherlands, which was originally promoted as a venue in um, where was it originally? I can't actually even remember now. I'm completely confused. I um, Tew Delft. Oh, Tew Delft, sorry. <laughs> My brain is <laughs> running. So the original venue I was promoting was um, at Tew Delft, but that has been now changed to Surf and Utrecht. So in a case you're interested to join our DNP online music group, please get in touch with me. I wasn't sending the invitations just yet, but I'm hoping to do this by the end of this week because I do understand that the holidays are coming up as well. So it will be the best to find out your interest as soon as possible. Um, I'm not sure how many of you also know about our um, IBCC conference in February. Uh, we'll be running this between the 17th and 20th of February in Dublin this year. And I shared the link how to register and the program with you in the chat as well, so you can have a look. We will be having a lighting talk also about DMP online, and um, it would be lovely to see you. Um, you know, and also this time it's in Europe, and we are not somewhere far, so if you can make your way there in February, it will be great. I also um, shared the last recording uh, from October DMP online drop in session on YouTube. And in the chat, again, I'm sharing the link for this recording. And just to keep a track of all of these, um, because I think, especially now, um, due to the lovely knowledge exchange, which we have um, every month, um, these are quite popular, but sometimes people can't attend these due to various reasons. I created a playlist um, on YouTube. So um, if you want to listen to the older ones, please feel to do so. Um, the playlist is available on YouTube as well, and I shared the link in the chat as well. Um, also, just to let you know, um, this month uh, we were having a meeting 
with our colleagues uh, Maria, Brian uh, from DMP2, and they're visiting us from California, and Benjamin from the Opider uh, from France. And on our end, uh, we were joined by Sarah, Sam, Ray, our new joiner Marta and myself, and we'll be writing also a blog post about our meeting. But just to let you know a little bit what we were discussing, we met in the middle of November and we, as BMP2, we do work together on the roadmap project and we met for three days and we were just basically discussing the work for the uh, year ahead. Um, so on Wednesday, we split into two groups and, um, you know, we were uh, having one group where our developers um, had more time to discuss um, the technicalities around the roadmap development and in the afternoon we all came together and started to prioritize the work and to see what's going to be realistic um, and then we continue chatting and on Thursday morning we actually discussed uh, more the work around the machine actionable DMPs and we also I shared the link. Um, we worked on the development roadmap uh, plan for the following year. And I don't know whether I can actually, let me try to open this for you. Ah, there we go. So uh, we have scheduled our work into three quarters. So uh, the first part of work, which we hope that will run till February, 2020, is around the feedback uh, we have received in our user groups. and. Um, this will still focus on improving the conditional questions. Um, it's this uh, feature is already available on the MP Online uh, test. However, there is a little bit more work which we still need to work on uh, based on the most recent feedback. And we also want to, um, I think this has been actually already completed to improve search for our administrators. And we also want to make sure that the usage dashboard is more insightful for you so you can get better analytics about how is the tool used at your institution. Um, you can also, when you go on this link, the development roadmap link, um, there is this whole column um, on which when you click, you will be able to see all the planned work which we currently have. If there are any more ideas um, you would like us um, to work on, please feel free to contact us at DMP online at dcc.ac.uk and we can look at this and possibly add this into, into the usage dashboard. We will it's also integrate. Really interesting. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's also it's always really interesting to hear um, what kind of statistics different groups are looking for, whether it's like breaking things down by school or department, or um, just uh, other ways of analyzing your your DMPs and your usage. Definitely, Sam. Thank you. So. Um, you know, it's always very nice to hear more feedback because um, I was gathering some feedback for this whole year. Uh, but again, if there is something new that is popping into your mind, please feel free to talk to us and um, we'll try to see what we can do about that. And one, we'll... question. Oh. Oh, one question, um, Magdalena. Um, is the work on the full content API completed now? Or yeah, the additional filtering options are going to be part of the next roadmap uh, release, which I'm hoping to get into DMP online uh, before I'm away for holiday in December. Um, so hopefully next week. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, can you send us an, um, uh, a notification about that then? Yeah, along along with the documentation for the extra filtering options. Oh. And oh. Joachim, I, I believe you're waiting for that as well. Yes, yeah. I do. And also, I was wondering about this uh, small issue about having XML uh, export directly from of the DMC template. Uh, I need to double check if we've uh, made a ticket for it, but we should definitely have an issue for it on the board and uh, schedule that work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let Thanks. me just no reason not to support it. Uh, let me just go quickly into my notes so I don't forget about this. I'll just um, check whether we have a ticket for XML. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I'm sure I've seen it for, for I think uh, Sarah Jones was in contact with me about that. Yeah, I'll, I'll just want to check the number of the ticket. Yeah, yeah um, okay. So I know where we are with it. Um, yeah, okay. Okay. And, yes. uh, we are also um, 
in the first part of our work, we are also planning to connect um, export to Zenodo and Rio journals and complete some our work on regional filtering. Um, the second part of the work that will be running around spring and summer 2020 uh, will focus around making uh, our default template machine actionable um, and conforming to the RDA common standards with integrations to metadata standards, directory, RE free data, license picker, and other things. And we'll finish the year um, with allowing administrators to predefine a subset of good institutionally shared plans. Um, so we, we hope to see uh, more plans that will be possible to share um, within, at least within your institutions. So, you know, it's always better to see some uh, guidance or uh, other examples. And we will also improve the current plan version and a life cycle of plan versions so you can indicate the status of the plan and um, we will also work around how to incorporate multiple data sets option into DMP uh, so you can get better insights about various um, things such as storage requirements or license requirements or any other insights that might be useful for you. Um, because sometimes, you know, um, the research will involve various data sets and it's better to have the insight into each. And we will also enable super administrators or possibly administrators uh, to edit the static pages. And um, from our discussions, you know, and then we will have some ongoing system improvements in the back end as well. Um, we have been also discussing that um, over the summer we would like to and possibly hire a summer intern and that could do a work for us around usability testing for the administrators uh, before we done this testing for for the users uh, the mp online users but this time around we would like to really speak to the institutions to see how you go around creating a template or you know adding a guidance and based on this feedback just to see how we can improve the tool and um, just to continue, uh, to finish my rambling, um, we have Martin Nicholson starting with us. That's our third uh, software developer starting it with us next week on Monday. Um, so it's going to be a great help for us and we'll be able to hopefully um, work on the features and uh, bugs and other things much faster with additional help. So we are very much looking forward to that. Um, and I'm also not sure whether I'm opening the space for you. Uh, feel free to ask us anything or raise any points you have now. Um, yes, I think um, I was not in the meeting uh, in October, but um, I, if I understand correctly, the issue <laughs> about the conditional questions is now completed. Or is it still in a testing phase? Because I know there's a video about how you implement conditional questions in a template. Yeah. Uh, it's still in a testing phase. Um, okay. there, there are some bugs that need to be worked out with it and um, some other adjustments that we wanted to make based on the feedback. So there's the current version of it is deployed to DMP online dash test. Um, so people okay. can demo it um, and, and provide other kind of comments back on it. But we want to get okay. it uh, more solid before we implement it in the, the main code base. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I will look. Uh, I will look into that more closely. I, I, I haven't had time for that, but okay. Oh, no worries. So what I did um, on the screen, I just opened the ticket, and uh, we were having uh, further suggestions. Um, so they are. Oopsie. And they are highlighted here. So there is a little bit more work uh, we would like to do uh, before we release this, but. Yeah. Okay. Here. Yeah. Any other questions or points, either for Dan or myself or Sam? Okay. Um, okay. If not, um, feel free to always email us um, to our help desk at dmponline at dcc.ac. Um, if you are not following us already on Twitter, I shared all of the links in the chat as well. But on Twitter, we are at DMP Online. We do have a Facebook account and a LinkedIn account as well. And if you are not subscribed to our monthly newsletter, feel free to do so. Again, I think I already shared this link. 
And mm -hmm. our next chat is going to be on the 19th of December. I, I think it's quite probably un not unlucky day, but I don't know how many people are still going to be at work around this time since it's just before the holidays. But it's going to be on the 19th of December, half past 10 in the morning UK time. And I'm just sharing uh, the link and the time in the chat with you. And thank you very much, Dan, for um, show, showing us um, and talking to us this morning. If you could share the PowerPoint presentation with me, that would be much appreciated. Um, oh, thank, you. thank you, Sam, for joining the call this morning as well. And have a lovely day. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.